Hey guys, it's been about a month since I installed this Ream hybrid water heater. I just wanted to take a moment to share my thoughts, opinions, and answer some of the questions that were asked now that I had sufficient time to use it and learn how it works. Before we get into it, please hit that like button down below. It helps the channel tremendously. So there were two things I had pointed out in the original video as things I didn't like at first. The first one was that the electric heating element had kicked in the very first time I turned it on. I didn't like that because I had specifically set it to heat pump mode, only wanting the heat pump to run, never to turn the heating elements on. I was able to solve that issue by turning it to eco mode instead of heat pump mode. However, several of my viewers had pointed out that it was designed to do that the very first time you plug it in. I don't know if that was like a test of the elements or... Uh, you know, just to bring the water up to temperature so it wasn't freezing cold straight out of the well. So once I had read those comments, I had switched this back to heat pump mode. It's been over a month, I think it's been about five or six weeks at this point, and I have not seen those heating elements kick on since then. And some of you guys did point out that that was notated in the user's manual, but I did read through and I couldn't find any mention of it. Uh, so I don't know if I missed it or what was up there. The second thing I had pointed out was that the noise this emits. I still hear a very low hum up in some of the living spaces, mostly just in the bathroom. I can hear it in the living room a little bit if I purposely try to listen for it. I don't hear it in the bedrooms or anything like that, so I'm fairly satisfied with that. Uh, but that is something to keep in mind if you are considering purchasing one of these. So my overall conclusion after having used this for the past five to six weeks is that it was a great investment and it was money very well spent. This has exceeded my expectations in terms of power savings and consistency of water temperature. Uh, it's just incredible how well this works. I was not expecting that. So yeah, this is a single family home with three people. Our hot water use pretty much consists of only the dishwasher and showering. Uh, we don't really use it too much for laundry. And since about day two or three, I think it was, I've had the circuit breaker shut off for the 50 gallon electric water here that is still connected. And I haven't had to use that at all. It's been turned off the entire time. We've had some days where we've taken three showers straight in a row while the dishwasher is running and we have never once run out of hot water. Uh, and the water temperature has been very consistent. I haven't noticed any drops in temperature or anything like that towards the end of it. Uh, so next I'm going to pull up the app for this here on the phone. Now a few of you guys did mention you didn't like that you have to have this connected to the internet. Um, you don't have to connect it to the internet if you don't want to. You don't have to use the app. Most of the features are accessible through the front panel on the display here. You just can't access statistics and uh, it's become kind of an addiction watching it on my phone to be honest. So uh, again, you don't have to use it. You don't have to connect it if you don't want to. But Looking at the energy use for the month of May, I've consumed 95 kilowatt hours of electricity the entire month, that is 31 days, and that calculates out to about 3 kilowatt hours per day. Now, I don't have energy use statistics for the old electric water heater, but I can tell you with absolute certainty that the water is definitely hotter. We have this temperature set higher than we had set on the old water here. It's at 130 degrees currently, uh, and has been heated more consistently than ever before. And based on looking at my Batrium and other energy usage statistics, I would estimate roughly that this is about one-third the energy usage of the old electric water heater. Now, this is just typical family usage, right? We don't waste, like, we're not purposely going out of our way to waste water, but at the same time, we don't purposely go out of our way to save water, if that makes sense. Now, of course, I do still have the old tank set up in series with this one. Even though the circuit breaker is turned off on that tank, it does give me a little more uh, hot water storage than what a single tank would have. However, I would still expect the temperature to drop and the water to get colder as this tank runs out because once this tank is empty, uh, it's going to begin passing cold water through to the second tank and once that cold water is in the second tank, it would never heat up because that circuit breaker is turned off. Um, so while we do have a total of two 50 gallon tanks, they're actually about 45-ish I think. It's not like having two complete water heaters because the second one is turned off. And that was always the problem I had with the little six gallon Reliance here that I had pulled out is once that six gallon had cooled off, because six gallons of water gets used up pretty fast, uh, it would pass that cold water through to the old electric heater and I would feel a temperature drop right away because I had that electric water heater set slightly lower uh, than the six gallon Reliance to prevent it from turning on all the time. But yeah, I haven't noticed that kind of behavior whatsoever with this new water heater. So one thing a lot of viewers had pointed out was the way this, this water heater works is you know, it takes heat out of the air and it dumps that heat into the water and that's how it heats your water up. So a lot of you guys had pointed out that it's not really more energy efficient because when you take heat out of the air, you're now air conditioning the space where this water heater is installed and your home heating system has to run more uh, to make up for that heat loss. Now, while that is true, that is a valid point and uh, I suppose that would matter more if you're in a newly constructed house or you have super insulation or something like that, but this house is built in the 1970s it is insulated pretty well, it's not perfect. There is plenty of heat loss through the floor and whatever else that 
This basement's always around 65-ish degrees is what it is currently. Uh, so I don't think that's going to be any concern. I do notice when this has been running for several hours, it does feel cooler down here. But if I come down here in the morning when it's been off most of the night, I don't really feel a difference before versus after having installed this unit. I have seen a lot of people suggest, and I have seen videos of other people who have installed very intricate duct work. You can duct the exhaust output, and you can duct the air input as well. So they've done things like they'll collect air from a living space, bring it down here, heat the water, and then return the conditioned air back to their living space. And additionally, I've seen some people with valves and louvers, you know, so in the winter you can switch it from living space to outside, that way you're not cooling your living space. You know, those ideas are great in theory, but uh, there's no duct work in this home, and I'm not really fond of punching 8-inch holes everywhere to get that done. But uh, I do think that is a great idea if you have the means and you have stuff in place to have already done that. But of course, we are in spring right now, so we'll revisit that idea in the winter and see how well this actually performs in the winter. One thing I was a little bit disappointed about, and it's not really a fault of the unit, it's more of what my expectation was, I was hoping that this would also act as a dehumidifier and dehumidifier the basement, taking some moisture out of the air and reducing the amount of time the dehumidifier has to actually run. Uh, that's not the case. When I first connected this, it was producing some condensate output because it was very humid down here. But now that we're in the warmer months of spring, I've turned the dehumidifier on and I keep that set to around 50% relative humidity. So with the humidity that low, I haven't seen a drop of condensate come out of this since I have been running it maybe two or three days into it. Uh, if you're looking at this as a way to dehumidify a space, it might work if you don't have another dehumidifier already running, but if your humidity is fairly low, like 50% or so, I would not expect this to add any dehumidification, unfortunately. So my conclusions are if you're looking to replace an existing electric heater or you're doing something off-grid, I would definitely consider getting one of these air source hybrid units, especially if you're somewhere down south where you have much warmer weather. I spent about $1,500 on this unit from Home Depot, in addition to a few pieces of pipe and wiring and stuff like that to go along with it. I also got a $400 rebate from my utility company, which I've already received. Additionally, I believe there is a $300 tax credit, federal tax credit, I'll have to look into for the next year. Um, so it does knock quite a bit off the price, and it actually ends up making this a little bit cheaper than some of the electric replacement hot water heaters I have seen. Uh, so yeah, thank you for your input on the first video. It's a lot of fun reading through those comments. Uh, if you still have any questions or comments, you can leave those down below. Hit that like button before you go if you haven't already, and thank you for watching.